days. Happy Sunday, everybody. I always seem to say, are we live? This is Happy yours, Sunday. Mrs. Spielberg. Thank I you. am doing sober October. So cheers. Well, kind of. <laughs> really? really? <laughs> Maybe just today. <laughs> Maybe just for the show. How is everybody? Thank you so much, everybody, for your uh, beautiful words this week. Let's go over to the stove, Mrs. Spielberg. I want to get stuck in. Today we're going to Southeast Asia. Um, I've been blessed to um, go to Southeast Asia about three or four times with Crystal Cruises. And it's a really exciting place to visit. Um, today we're going to be highlighting the Rendang. Uh, Rendang we think of uh, from Indonesia, but it also went to Malaysia and Singapore. But I want to get the rice on the go and then hopefully we can have this cooked by the end of the show. I've got some coconut oil and I'm adding it to a slightly heated pan. Feel free at home if you wanted to, you could use some olive oil or if you wanted to use some butter in there. We've got some rice which has been washed and this is a basmati rice. Um, feel free if you want to use some jasmine. Um, when it comes to rice and we think of Southeast Asia, we think of the likes of basmati and jasmine and those two rices have so much fragrance. You know, they're, they're, they're much different than what we see, like, from getting uh, in, in America, like Uncle Ben's or something like that. We have something that's just got so much flavor to it. So what we're doing is we're actually coating the rice in what we in oil, or as we'd like to say in the kitchen, in the fat. And what that does is, as it coats the grains of rice, each one stays individual. Each one get, keeps its own personality. So that's what's good about this. That's the reason why we use the oil, because a lot of the time, if you just add it to just water or stock to it, then it's not gonna have that individuality. So trust me, on this one so as as we're cooking i know you're not here with me in the kitchen but mrs spielberg you can smell nuttiness and that nuttiness is almost like when you're making popcorn when you think about toasting that popcorn it smells lovely i've got a slice of ginger i've got some garlic and some powdered ginger it's not very often i will use powdered ginger but it was something that i learned in indonesia uh, we had a cooking class in jimbaran bay uh, at the four seasons there i got to spend a whole day with a chef one-on-one -on -one. And he taught me a lot how his family would cook. So now we're going to take a garlic clove and we're going to add the ginger to the pot. Over here, I've got the coconut milk and I've got the stock. And it's going to sizzle up, Mrs. Spielberg. Uh -oh. You just move the camera back a bit. It's going to sizzle up for this nice and hot. So at this point now, give it one stir and then pop your wee lid on. The oven is preheated to 425. It's a high temperature. We've got quite a bit of liquid and we want to actually, ooh, I can feel that nice and warm oven. I'm gonna place this inside of the oven. I've already removed the shelves because you wanna make sure. So before you start your oven, make sure you know the measurements of your pan that it's gonna fit in, because there's nothing worse than you go to, you know you're gonna use it at 425, it's a hot temperature, and most of them's gonna go to 5, 550, and you got your shelf in your way, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, oh, sausages. You know, oh no, Doug's drinking already. <laughs> you're already doing that. So now it's in there, Alexa, set a timer for 25 minutes. 25 minutes. Okay, minutes. so I'm going to place this on. This is going to be the one what we prepared earlier in the second. I won't show you that yet, Mrs. Spielberg. And I'm just going to heat this pan up as well. I'm coming Whoa. behind you. Sorry, Mrs. Spielberg. I'm heating the pans up. So I'm getting them preheated. They don't need no oil. Let's go over to talk about how we're going to make this. I want to get the rice on first because it was important just to show you how to cook rice. Um, most of us don't have rice cookers. I have a, um, a pressure cooker, like an, um, one of those Instant Pot sorts of things so you can cook rice in it, but I never do. And we'll, at the end of the, the recipe today, I'll show you various ways you can cook this beef in your kitchen. So when we look at this recipe, rendang, it's got a lot of ingredients, and I know what you're thinking of. Come on, John, you just gave us a recipe last week, which was a Moroccan tagine, and it had a lot of ingredients. But every part of this ingredient really adds to it. And when you have this rendang, you, there's a jolly good chance that you're gonna have one of the best tasting 
flavorful dishes you've ever had in your life. Mrs. Spielberg, do you have, can I get your piece of paper for you? Yes. Have you got some comments? Um, what happens is during the show, and please do comment and ask your questions, we don't get them all, so I mean, we feel terrible. So there was some that we didn't get to last week, so I'll let you do that, Mrs. Spielberg. Uh, let's see, Patricia Gregory said that she made the lobster roll for her birthday and loved it. Well, well Carolyn Porter, she loves us, and she said next week you'll have to cook in shorts. I think that it has to do with how hot it was in here. It's slightly, <laughs> slightly cooler, but not too great. We should have worn the shorts. Uh, Penny Lambert, uh, she made the crab cakes. She used a smaller scoop and individually froze the cakes. Well and she's been um, enjoying sharing one as an appetizer. Barbara Deal said um, she is so excited to travel again and she just ordered some travel accessories and got taste for her birthday. Oh, well done. So that is great. And she, I just saw that she wrote that she also loves when you say sausages. Uh, <laughs> Margo uh, said, happy Sunday. She made the crab cakes this week, super yummy. Susie Meisel, this is the highlight of my week. I just broke my foot and this is just delightful. I am so sorry, Susie, I hope you feel better. And Heather Stewart Russell said, I learned something new every single Sunday. So that is great. How wonderful is that? I'm so happy you got taste. Be sure to visit crystalcruises.com for the book. It's absolutely a joy with the, all the recipes that we make on board. Just look at that beautiful dish. Isn't that just Gorgeous. so pretty? And it's a great book and a great present. Um, and I'm looking forward to traveling again. The good news is, and I always say this, but we're getting a week closer to traveling. One person again. we forgot was our dear friend Mila, who made the butternut squash soup. We love Mila. Mila is the best of the best of the best. So triple best. Uh, Mila's soup look absolutely fabulous. She'd done these lovely red swirls and the consistency looked perfect. So well done, Mila. Um, okay, so let's talk about ingredients. Um, first of all, spices. Um, I purchased my spices whole. Uh, when we go to the stove, I'll show you how I keep them in my drawer. Um, there's a couple of ways of grinding spices. So you can see I've ground them. This is nutmeg. So nutmeg, you can just easily use your microplane to grate it. You can see it's freshly grating the nutmeg because a lot of people buy it um, already pre-grated. And feel free to. I just wanted to show you also, this is the outside of the nutmeg. Not many people ever see this. I don't know if you've ever seen this, Mrs. Spielberg. That smells really good. This is called mace. And mace you use a lot in, uh, you'll see it a lot in North African cooking as well. And Indian cooking. Mace is just a fabulous spice that we don't see too often. So we're using some, for this one we're using some nutmeg in there. We're using some, we've got some cumin. And here's the cumin before it's ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we've got some coriander seed and some turmeric. So there are a couple of ways to ground spices. Um, you could use your mortar and pestle, which we normally use on the show, but I just wanted to show you another way which leads into a tip. If you've got a coffee grinder at home, if you grind your beans at home, what you can do is actually take a cup of rice. So let's say, for instance, you've got this. This is nice and clean at the moment. I'm just going to quickly grind my cumin seeds. Yeah. So I'm going to take the, the cumin seeds and I'm just going to pretend, you know, this has uh, had coffee in it. So what you've got to watch when you've um, when you grind things is that it can have a tendency to rust. So one of the best ways to clean your coffee grinder or to clean your spice grinder, either way, so if you use this, is just take a handful of rice and that will absorb most of the odours and mm -hmm. it will give it a jolly good cleaning to the rice. And the rice is inexpensive and it gives it a really good and nice cleaning and that's one of the ways I clean my coffee grinder or my spice grinder is with rice and you can see it's taken all of that out. Very so good. Um, it's, it's good to have a grinder at home but you don't need to, you can use your mortar and pestle which is, I like to do that to be honest, I just like to use it. Yes. A couple things, one I want to say hi to Carmen who's on today, we love hi. Carmen so thank you for joining us and also Donna wanted to know how our bocce game went last week and I will say not so swell, we are going to be practicing 
again today after the show. We wasn't very swell at Bocce. We've got some other friends coming over on a Sunday. If uh, anybody knows me and Mrs. Spielberg, we always have uh, local neighbours come or friends come over for Sunday dinner. Um, it reminds me of being a young lad where that's what we do to recharge our batteries. And Carmen, uh, I want to say you're going to be very proud of us. This morning, we just had a spin bike delivered. Yep. So uh, we've been waiting, it's been on back order, uh, I won't say the company's name, you may have seen it advertised on TV. So me and Mrs. Spielberg have taken up spinning and Carmen's so good at that, she actually teaches as well. Okay, so look, we've got those spices, don't be scared of ingredients, they all add cumin, turmeric and then we've got the nutmeg and a piece of a quill of cinnamon. When it comes to using these ingredients, this is called lemongrass. Lemongrass has a distinctive taste and it's beautiful in Southeast Asian cooking. Now, one, I'm going to grab something from the fridge, Mr. Spielberg, because I'm always looking to help people cook corners. They sell this one at the store in the tube. Um, although it's got a little bit of sweetness to it, it was very good. I recipe tested it because I normally test it. I also purchased some dried kaffir lime leaves. So you can see this is kaffir lime leaf. Now this is one of my all time favorite ingredients. I remember when we filmed uh, one of the shows, if you didn't get a chance to go along to Crystal Cruise or the YouTube website, you'll see a culinary journey. And myself and David George, we went out and we've done these wonderful um, shrimp with a coconut rice cake and a mango kaffir lime vinaigrette. And it was just sublime. Now you can get these, uh, my friend sends me them, but also you can purchase the plant. I actually brought my plant He's new, he's only a young fella, so I brought him into the kitchen. <laughs> it's, it's, it's supposed to, I love that you put it on a crystal tray. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kaffir lime tree that is not growing out of the countertop. Mrs. Spielberg. <laughs> Mrs. Spielberg looks at me because I spend days thinking oh. about these segments trying to just pass along <laughs> stuff. And then she's like, what is the kaffir lime leaf on my counter? No, not a leaf, a tree. A tree. So this grows well. We live in the, on the east coast in Martha's Vineyard. It grows well in the summertime. It's going to go into the greenhouse to keep them alive. I'm going to move them out the way. But I want to show you it. Um, you can try, as the recipe calls, a bit of lime zest in there, but it's never going to give you that flavour. You can purchase them online. Please do not buy the dried ones. Um, I purchased some dried ones, and how I've done a taste test was I took a cup of water, and I, I took some dried ones, and I took some fresh ones, and the dried ones uh, are not very swell. It's almost like, have you ever met someone, and like the, one of the nicest people, funny people, and lovely people you've ever met, and you say, uh, I want you to meet my brother, and then you meet your brother, you meet the brother, and you think, oh my goodness, it doesn't even look like they're cut from the same cloth. They just look, they're not totally different. One's just not got the same pleasant smell. Uh, one's not got the same personality and vibrant. <coughs> Although I've got a great brother. Okay, <laughs> let's do it, Mrs. Spielberg. Um, a lot of Southeast Asian cooking use shallots. If you can get shallots, please use them. They're a small onion, but I know a lot around the country and, and in England, you can't always get your hands on them, so we use red onion, which is very similar. Or you can just say shallots. Uh, Shallots. <laughs> Shallots. But, but, well, Shallots. I've peeled the ginger. You know, in Southeast Asia, Mrs. Spielberg, just to come back up to you here for a second, <laughs> in Southeast Asia, they'll use galangal. So, well, you can't get your hands on it. It's really hard to get galangal. So we're just using ginger, about three and a half ounces of fresh ginger. Here's the lemongrass, okay? Lemongrass is going in there. And then we've got some oil. Now, when it comes to peppers, Mrs. Spielberg, it's really up to you which way you want to go. Now, if you can't get yourself some fresh peppers, because peppers come in different heat forms. So here's some dried New Mexico ones. I would probably take the top off and I'd rehydrate that for about 10 minutes in some boiling water. You know, don't make the mistake of just using Thai bird chilies. Thai bird chilies will be way too spicy. This is the, um, we have these ones in Chinese cooking so I have just got some regular just red, red peppers just small uh, these ones about the same heat as a jalapeno um, and remember 
The pepper heat is in the ribs. So when you cut a pepper open, it's in the ribs. An easy way to, I will answer your question, to remove the seeds, just so I can show you, because I love to teach you things. I really think about you all week. Take the top off, see like that. And whenever we're working with peppers, I'm not gonna do it now, put some oil on your hands. Remember, if you put oil on your hands, it will stop the oil from the pepper absorbing into your skin, because there's many times you'll um, work with a pepper and it, it, you touch your eyes and it hurts. So one of the things we can do now with it I'll just show you this is just over your fingers just rub this and you can see the seeds coming out can you see that and that gets rid of all of those seeds so that's going to help reduce down the spice level um, if you get a wee bit spicy happy days two questions yes. one can you use lime like lime leaves from any tree or do they have to be the kaffir lime um, tree i've not i i think it would have to be the the kaffir lime leaf and i want to say i know there are some movements on about calling it kaffir as well so we've got to be careful on how they what they call it with the kaffir but that's how it's known in the industry um i've never done it with a regular lime leaf i've only done it the classical way you can buy them frozen and buy them online and they freeze brilliantly you know i've always He's got them in my freezer. So you can see I've got a big bag. Are these from Seth? These are from Seth, yeah. And I keep these frozen um, and I just pull them out and they add the most distinctive, beautiful, absolutely wonderful fragrance. The second question was how do you cut up the, when you threw in the lemongrass, how do you cut it? Yeah, I'll show you that it. right now. I'm just going to put the spices, the, all the spices in here, Mrs. Spielberg. Now, I just want to say to you as well at home, um, just please be careful with turmeric. I'm going to add the turmeric to the pot because someone told me that their food process has got a yellow tint on it. So um, I don't want to take that risk, you know, so I'm just going to add this to the pot. Um, with the, with the um, lemongrass, Mrs. Spielberg, just take the top off. See here, mm -hmm. now the outer leaves are really tough. See these outer leaves, they're really, really tough. And you can use these in stock. You could use your paring knife, obviously. You know, I'm used to my chef's knife. So you can see, see the outer leaves here, Mrs. Spielberg? Mm -hmm. I'm just taking those outer leaves off right to there. Now you'll start to feel he's getting softer. It smells good. Yes, it's beautiful. It's distinctive. So you can see that the stalk goes to there. So I'm going to chop him off just there, Mrs. Spielberg, okay? Mm -hmm. And then what we would do then is we could chop him into pieces. If you don't have a food processor, just, you know, when we're learning to cook, just chop at an angle like that. You don't have to go straight down, just while you're building up speed. So watch, I'm just going to chop it at an angle. So it's still giving us the cut, but we're chopping at an angle. Can you see? Because sure, a lot yeah. of people are scared when you're like that. Okay, so that shows you how to chop lemongrass. Great. Um, some people, if you don't want to chop it, give it, get a couple of lemongrass, give it a jolly good bashing. So give them a good, just take the back of the knife and give them a good bashing. Throw that in the sauce and let the flavour come that away. Let the flavour steep that way. Okay, so now we've got the ingredients, small amounts of oil, and then we're going to take some garlic, Mrs. Spielberg. I've peeled a garlic clove just to show you a quick one, just a quick heat while we're here. With the garlic clove, whenever we're peeling it, we know we're going to bash it. Take the top off and then just give it a bash with your knife. And that's how easy it is. You know, we're going to smash the garlic clove. You can see the skin's coming off it nice and easy. So he's off to the blend that he goes. So now we've got all of the ingredients. And although it looks like a lot of ingredients, Mrs. Spielberg, the blend is doing all the work. This is just the food process that doesn't get mixed. But you might want to just stop it for a second, give it a scrape down. And this is doing all the work for you. And I will say, you know, sometimes you can see this. Days. Sometimes, you know, when you see a list of ingredients, you get a little bit scared, but you don't need to. You just look at the process and it's, it, it works really well. So now we've got the majority of our ingredients a nice paste going. Let's go over to the stove, Mrs. Spielberg. The rice is cooking in the oven. The pan's warming up nicely. I'm going to take the lid off. It's heating up. And I'm just going to turn this up a little bit. It was on just a low heat, so now I'm going to turn it up more because now we're starting to get some cooking going, okay? Yep. I'm going to take a little peek. I don't need to see this yet. Oh, my.
my goodness gracious, by Jove, is that looking good? It smells really good. It's feel big. I'm, not, I'm, I'm hiding it from the camera because we're going to do one of be before and after. This has been slowly just simmering away. The smell in the kitchen is on me. Oh, by Jove, let me just turn that one down a little bit. The worst thing you could do, imagine that if it was burned. <laughs> It's my worst nightmare. Okay, the pan's getting nice and warm, Mrs. Spielberg. Mm -hmm. Okay, at this stage now, I'm going to bring the paste across. We know we've got some oil in there, so we're going to add the spices, add the mixture to the pan. Just adding the mixture. And I used olive oil. If you want to use coconut oil, you could use that in there as well. And now we're just going to start to cook this. I'm going to turn the pan on so it doesn't get too... Polly, Polly, the path, the pots aren't actually new. We just used some Barkeeper's Friend to clean yes. them up. <laughs> um, yeah, I clean with Barkeeper's Friend. Um, I found that to be a wonderful uh, to use to clean most of my pots. Um, sometimes some of my Dutch ovens have some marks down below that I can't get out, but usually I use Barkeeper's Friend. I do want to say, just for the record, I don't work for Barkeeper's <laughs> Friend. I just want to, well, <laughs> Thank you, know. you for always telling us every well, company you don't now. work for. How many people, you know, just try to take advantage of doing people's hard-earned money? So we're cooking this out. As we know, you know, we've got a, a live show, so we can't really, you know, spend the five to ten minutes. I'm just going to grab my beef from you. From over here. Do you like Staub or Le Creuset better? Uh, do I like Staub or Le Creuset? Ooh, they're both jolly good. To be honest, it's sort of, it's what you like. I do like the lid in Staub, but I've got more Le Creuset. Uh, I will say also Cuisine Art. I have a very inexpensive one, and I use that a lot, which is what we're cooking the rice in. So, uh, and I don't work for Cuisine Art. <laughs> Uh, so just so you know. Um, so what we've got now is chuck. We've got some chuck and we've just got a little drying. Um, chuck, if we think about it, when we look at the muru cow, uh, chuck is from around this area, so around the shoulder towards the neck. So it's gonna be a tougher meat, it's gonna have more collagen in there. So it's gonna need longer cooking. This is not something where we'd be using an inexpensive, uh, sorry, an, an expensive cut of meat such as filet or sirloin. You can make the sauce by itself and then do that. But for this one, we want to be using the pieces. Of Wendy said, "Don't forget the turmeric." And then we want to add. The turmeric. <laughs> Thanks, Wendy, Wendy. Thank you for always looking out for me. And I'll tell you what: we'll add the soy sauce, and we'll add the brown sugar. <laughs> Thanks, Wendy. And then we'll add the kaffir lime leaf and the leaves. So the the pieces are chopped. Imagine this is cooked for a few minutes. The smell in the kitchen now is absolutely fabulous. It smells like uh, the, we, we're in port, uh, Crystal Cruise is in port, we've all gone out on, on, on excursions, and you know, which I love, I love to go out on excursions with the guests when we go to cooking classes. We have such a joyous time with copious amounts of uh, alcohol. Uh, so now we're going to add the actual beef to it and these are larger cuts so we use larger cuts because we know they're going to lose a lot of lots of the water content as they cook we're going to be losing at least 25 percent of that water content yes can you use coconut cream instead of coconut milk you could use yes well coconut cream um with that coconut cream is that the i just want to clarify is coconut cream the block is that the, the block of it? They both, or, they both come in um, containers. Uh, like, there's, there's a, cause there's, I've seen in Jamaica, they have a coconut cream in a block. Um, I use coconut milk. Uh, if you want to, you could just use like a, a light coconut. Because you got it, and there's also this coconut cream that he used for cocktails as well. It's I think that might egg. be. Because you think yeah. if it's the one that they use for cocktails, that's full of sugar. Yeah. So it can't be that. I think they call it Coco Lopez as well. Um, I use coconut milk. Uh, the other one that they use in Jamaican, which is a hard form, um, I would probably use just extra stock and then fold some of that in the last time because that's just the fat from it. So what we do, Mrs. Spielberg, is we can see this thick paste and it's coating the beef beautifully the beef is just being coated now normally when we cook and we think about it and we think about European French style cooking which is what I was classically trained uh, normally we'd see the beef to get the Maillard reaction we're not going to see the Maillard reaction because this is going to be searing a Maillard reaction that browning of the beef the caramelization only happens over 300 Fahrenheit but because of this long cooking process and how we cook the sauce down we don't need to actually brown the meat 
if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So we're just actually just getting, and what we're doing here is just coating the meat with some of that flavor. So we let that go for about five minutes until it's got a little bit of color and it's infused the meat. At this stage now, we'll add the coconut milk. I can see there's some separation, and normally what I'll do is I pour them into these containers because I don't really want to, you know, show you all the companies because in case you think I'm that particular brand, well, you know what I mean, Mrs. Spielberg. So I'm going to add the coconut milk, and here we go. So the coconut milk, so a, a can of coconut milk is just over one and three quarter cups. And then we're gonna add some chicken stock. If you don't have chicken stock, you could use some water. If you don't have some water, feel free to use some beef, uh, sorry, you, if you don't like chicken stock, you could use beef stock in here or vegetable stock. So we've got a considerable amount of liquid in here and that's going to reduce down. So what we want to do now, Mr. Spielberg, Yes. Is it unsweetened coconut milk? That is unsweetened coconut milk as well, yeah. Um, now, this, for the next two hours on the stove, is going to evaporate. During those hours, the meat's going to lose about 25% of its water content. But what's going to happen is it will reduce down. For the first hour and a quarter, it just doesn't need that much meat in the end. It doesn't need that much stirring. You just go over occasionally. Yeah. The con these containers that you have on the countertop, yes. um, who makes those? Um, I got those from um, a store called Crate and Barrel. Um, I got them online, and um, they just I, have tops. I, yeah, they're like the old-fashioned uh, milk container. Um, I use them because when I'm doing a show, um, I don't really want you to think that one product is the only one you need. Because if, it, if you know about me by now, as we cook together, I'm always thinking about you. So. Over two hours, Mrs. Spielberg, this cooks, and we're doing it the old fashioned way here, the way it would be made, you know. I think one of the fabulous things about, you know, with Crystal Cruises, when you tour the world, you get to go and you get to learn how it's really made. And that experience you can't get from a cookbook, that experience you cannot get from watching just the show. And people always say, because Crystal always wins for the best food, and you say, well, why is that? Because our chefs, they get to go to the countries, they get to work and they get to experience and taste. And you know, well, you know how good the food is. It's you? absolutely delicious. When it comes down, now take a look at this, Mrs. Spielberg, you can see that it's just reducing nicely down. See the way it's got this thick sauce. So in Malaysia, this would be about the thickness of the sauce we would have. In, in Indonesia, when you go over to Indonesia, what they would do there is they would reduce it down even more because they want the, the, the reason why they first created this is that they, they want the meat to last many days. But in Malaysia, it's got this sauce and you can see, as we look closely, you can see some of the coconut fat gently coming off. And it's all about what consistency you like. You know the meat's gonna be beautifully tender. At this stage now, look, it's just fallen apart. Mrs. Spielberg, can you see that? Look at the meat, how tender it is. I'm hardly just touching it i'm not even serenading it it's just falling apart sally yes that's cinnamon so here's the cinnamon quill sally so at this stage we remove this you don't want someone to mistake that for a big piece of beef because that will not <laughs> i could be crack it too the lime leaf you know be careful you get my hands are like asbestos because i've cooked for years those lime leaves we look for them and we're going to just fish them out. Can you see? Did you add the cinnamon stick to this pan? The cinnamon stick to the pan, let me see. Yeah. Uh, who was that? Oh, uh, that was Don Alexander. Don Alexander. <laughs> Don't forget to add the cinnamon <laughs> stick. I'm so glad that our audience is so engaged. Donna also thinks that maybe one of the segments you could cook and be on the Peloton, which would be absolutely hilarious. By Jove. <laughs> Um, so now we're taking out the uh, the cafe lime leaves. You can see uh, Alexa, stop. You can see they've done their job. See the lime leaves, just fishing them out. And then what I say for you at home, have a taste of this. Does it need any more salt? Does it need any more pepper? You know, remember you can always add it at the table side. So I'm going to take this curry over to the side over here. Am I going with you? You can come with me over there. I'm going to bring this across. The lime juice is in there as well. 
Uh, and then what I want to do now is, while we're there, I'm going to put that to just there for a second, and then I'm going to grab the rice out. So the rice was about 25 minutes. I'm coming to grab the rice, Mrs. Spielberg. Yep. That's going to come out. And the rice, what we normally do is let, I can't see it from the glasses. <laughs> Gotta love it live. <laughs> Alexa, stop. The rice we'd let sit for about 10 minutes just to let the air go nicely. So what I would normally do, one second Mrs. Spielberg, I cooked some rice earlier on, so I'm gonna bring that across for you. The rice, when it comes out, it's over here. So <laughs> with the rice, I cooked some earlier on. This is that cuisine art pan I was telling you about that. They're pretty good, you know, for the price. The rice, what we do is take out the piece of garlic, take out the ginger, and you can see, always fluff your rice with a fork, okay? Always fluff it with a fork. Look at the way, remember we talked about each one's got its own personality? Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Each one, none of it's sticking together. And the smell, I can smell the coconut. It smells absolutely fabulous. Now, um, just before we go, um, I normally serve this with, I'll serve this with some flatbreads, but I just want to show you one more thing, Mrs. Spielberg. Um, I, this week, um, what I've done was, I took my um, Instapot, or my um, Zaho is the company who I use, it's the same as Instapot. I did exactly the same process with, with what we've done before. I browned the ingredients, you can do it in there, and I let it cook for 40 minutes. So here's the meat after 40 minutes. It's really tender. What you would do then is take that out, place it into the pot and reduce it down for 20 minutes. So if you don't have time and you don't want to make this on the stove top, you can throw it into your pressure cooker 40 minutes long and then remove the meat, reduce the sauce all the way back and then reintroduce the meat to it. If you've got a slow cooker, about 10 hours, remove the meat out and then reduce the sauce and fold it back in. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Um, I'm always looking to see how we can cook in different ways and come up with solutions because I know a lot of people may not want to just stir on the stove. Um, it's been wonderful. I hope, you know, as we look at this Mrs. Spielberg, when it comes to serving, we've got this wonderful, thick, beef stew you can see that it's just tender it's got a lovely sauce to it i would take this rendang and then i'm just going to place it into a small bowl and it's quite unctuous it's quite rich it is so a little bit goes a long way we would take that and then i like to top this mrs spielberg with a small amount of toasted coconut and then maybe some chopped peanuts. It could easily be cashew nuts, anything you want to. You could add some chilies, you could add some cilantro to it. Serve that with some rice. And then uh, we made some what we call roti, some flatbreads, but feel free at home to serve it with some purchased pita breads. And there you have a dish that you'll see in Southeast Asia. Deb was asking about a wine pairing, and I think that um, a really nice Riesling would work because it would help cut the spice. It would. A Riesling would be perfect. That isn't super this. sweet. Yeah, because it's not too sweet. And always remember, don't add too much chili. You can always add some chilies on the side with it. There's nothing worse than if you go up to someone's dinner and you're trying to eat and it's just so piping hot and you can't even concentrate on the subject matter. You're just there and your face is as red as a Peruvian tomato. It was like us filming in the hot studio last Sunday. <laughs> what are we making next week? Next week, well, we asked you what you wanted to learn <laughs> and you said to us, we want to learn. So guess what we're making? We are making sticky <laughs> Sticky toffee pudding. We've had so many requests and um, uh, I think someone had said, you promised your teachers and I said, when it comes to fall, we're going to do it. Sticky toffee pudding first became popular in the 70s in Britain. It knocked a trifle to one side and uh, we've been working on the recipe. Uh, we've got a recipe that you can execute in your home and it's not too sweet. More often than not, sticky toffee pudding is too, too, sticky toffee pudding is too sweet. 
I hope you enjoyed today's class. Thank you for joining us. Um, always remember, positivity is better than negativity. And remember, every positive word that comes out your mouth, hopefully it will inspire someone else, but it will also, someone else will catch it in their sail and their ship will head to a better direction. That sounds great. We're looking forward to next Sunday and I hope everyone has a great week. Thanks guys. Thanks everyone. Cheerio for now. Bye.